They were a group of low wage workers. They hardly knew each other in the beginning. They had some street smarts, but were not among the elites or well-educated. That wasn't their lot in life. But they were kind and thoughtful and always trying to do their best. Some didn't always make the best decisions. Others were full of doubt, veiled in questions. But they tried and believed. And they were not always liked. They walked from town to town, choosing to follow a teacher that they believed in. A teacher who was so similar to them. Working class, a dark-skinned commoner but also holding within a divine spark. A spark, the teacher told them, that we all have within us. A spark that motivated and radiated love that gave rise to a countercultural movement, speaking truth to power, working to end oppression, and seeking a better way for all of God's creation. They were the first century disciples, followers of Jesus. We seldom consider their context. It might be helpful if we think about who the disciples might be in our 21st century world. A modern day disciple would likely be the server at your favorite takeout restaurant the woman picking fruit or vegetables in the field, the brown skin teller at your bank, the trans person loading groceries in your car, the kid with the cut off shorts and rainbow hair. Modern day disciples might be as one friend shared, all the people we tend to say, knock it off and get in line to. Or as another friend said, the 21st century disciples would most certainly include a dog as the only way to handle the disappointment of humanity is with a dog by your side. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. At the end of chapter nine in Matthew's gospel, Jesus proclaims to the disciples that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out the laborers into his harvest. And by the beginning of chapter 10, Jesus summons his disciples and gives them the authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. They are to be the answer to the prayer for the city. And as the disciples receive their mission, Jesus offers words of guidance and warning. He says, if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. And he continues, whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. But Jesus also offers words of promise. Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. It is a promise that while there will be challenges, they will find welcome. It is natural when hearing our sacred stories to cast ourselves in a role. Which character are we? Are we the disciples? Maybe we think we're the Jesus character. Maybe we even play the role of God. In today's scripture, it is easy to cast ourselves as the you in our story. 
Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. Without a doubt, someone welcoming us into a space is an act of hospitality, love, and access. We can listen to our scripture and hear Jesus telling us to be nice and welcome the stranger. But I also think we need to dig a little deeper. Black liberation theologian James Cohen invites us to reimagine our biblical characters in light of our 21st century context. For example, Cohn writes that the New Testament revealed Jesus as one who identified with those suffering under oppression, the socially marginalized and the cultural outcast. And since America has organized herself around socially constructed categories of whiteness and blackness, Cohn argues that Jesus reveals himself as black in order to disrupt and dismantle white oppression. We need to remember that the you in our scripture, when Jesus says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, does not necessarily look like us. The you in our story also includes the disciples and apostles that are all around us. The working poor, the homeless person on the corner, the same-sex couple holding hands, those walking the streets and raising Black Lives Matter signs. This may make some feel really uncomfortable, but it's worth considering why that might be. Because as long as we cast ourselves in the character of you, we will always play the salvific role. We will always cast ourselves in the role of being right, of being special, of being divine. We risk even placing ourselves above Christ. As long as we cast ourselves in the character of you, we will never see ourselves as the ones in need of healing. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. The disciples are all around us. Jesus is all around us. There are so many who are curing the sick and raising the dead and cleaning the leopards and casting out demons, and we just have to welcome them. May we be healed.